Elon's lawyers have officially terminated the acquisition of Twitter. But I actually think when all is said and done, Elon will still buy this company. Let's figure it out. You know, let's just start here. Elon tweeted this. First one is they said I couldn't buy Twitter. We on this show predicted that Elon would buy Twitter. Okay. Then they wouldn't disclose bot info. It's actually fraud. Now they want to force me to buy Twitter in court. And then where he's keeling over of la dying of laughter. Now they have to disclose bot info in court. Okay, so what does all of this mean? Let's unpack this. Will Elon actually end up buying Twitter? No, I actually think, yeah, um, I do. It, it would look crazy. And all of the media publications hate Elon. So they're all saying, oh, this judge is going to force Elon to buy Twitter. But, but here's the thing you got to understand, gang. Twitter executives committed fraud. I'm waiting for the class action lawsuit from investors. Elon tweeted this out May 17th. 20% fake slash spam accounts while four times higher what Twitter claims could be much higher. My offer was based on Twitter's SEC filings being accurate. Yesterday, Twitter CEO publicly refused to show proof of what they've reported in their SEC filings, which is that they have less than 5%. Um, their MDAU, MDAO, which is monetizable daily active users. They've said in multiple public filings that, that, uh, that their spam bots account for less than 5% of that number. And so now if we jump to the letter from Elon's attorneys, where they basically say, hey, why are we canceling this thing? Although Twitter has not yet provided complete information to Mr. Mr. Musk that would enable him to do a complete and comprehensive review of spam and fake accounts on Twitter's platform, he has been able to partially and preliminarily analyze the accuracy of Twitter's disclosure regarding its MD MDAO. While this analysis remains ongoing, all indications suggest that several of Twitter's public disclosures regarding its MDAOs are either false or materially misleading. That's called fraud. A huge part of how platform companies are valued is off of what? It's off of growth. And a huge part, because we've covered Twitter on the show for years, I've talked for years about how uh, Twitter has flat user growth, how, um, yes, they report like 200 million global uh, monthly active users, but no one cares about those users. It's all about the U.S. users, which are monetizable, hence the M in, in DAO, right? Monetizable daily active users. So how could you monetize or how should you be able to monetize a daily active user who is a spam or a fake bot account, right? You shouldn't be able to. You're actually now defrauding your advertisers. So when you look at these numbers in the U.S. from 2017 through the end of 2021, look at the chart. Uh, it goes, you know, it doesn't go up and to the right quickly, but it's generally trending up and to the right. And this is not by accident, right? You, if you go to Q1 2017, it's a 26 million. Uh, you go to Q1 no, no, let's do uh, before COVID. Let's go Q4 2019, right before COVID. 31 million. Hmm, okay. Then COVID comes. It goes up into the mid to high 30s. Now they're in the mid to high 30s. And Q4 2021, they say you got 38 million, right? So if you actually say, well, hmm, if 10 or 20% of your MDAO are fake, this chart looks a lot different, right? A lot different. If 10 to 20% of this uh, 38 million in Q4 of 2021 are fake, well, now this number should be like 30 million. And, you know, all these numbers should be revised. And a huge part of how any tech company, especially a platform company, is valued is off of growth. Growth of what? monetizable users for a content platform, so for a social media platform. So management clearly knows that when, if they're reporting to investors, which they've done on multiple occasions in written and in written, uh, you know, filings uh, to the SEC and in their statements, you know, to analysts on their earnings calls, 
So if they're saying, yeah, we have less than 5% spam or fake bot accounts, and we've got a process to, you know, in place to uh, calculate that, and then someone goes in to buy it, and you then realize that, oh, actually, you're possibly, you know, 100 to 200% or possibly 400% greater than what you reported on, yeah, that's, that's a big problem. Now, I don't think Elon just canceled the deal without going to Twitter and saying, guys, like, you know, this thing's no longer worth $44 billion. Like, this is a very different story of a company. Not to mention, let's be honest, markets have tanked. Valuations have, 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 are completely different from where they are a few months ago, which is when Elon made uh, the initial offer for Twitter. So he's obviously feeling some buyer's remorse that he overpaid, looking for ways that he can retrade the agreement, which he's alluded to um, in the past that you know he's not sure if it's actually worth $44 billion anymore. Do I think he still wants to buy it? Yes. Do I think that he tried to go to the Twitter board or Twitter CEO and say, hey, I don't think this thing is worth $44 billion anymore. How about 30? And they clearly didn't like that. I don't think he just says, yeah, this thing is fake. I'm out of here. See ya. Right. I think they tried to negotiate um, a lower deal. They could not come to terms. And now they're going to court. And then, and then Elon said, okay, I'm out. I'm done. And now Twitter is, is suing Elon and wants the $44 billion. Honestly, I think it's a poor decision. I don't know what Elon was trying to retrade them down to. Pretty confident he was retrading them. Usually frowned upon, but in today's environment, we've talked about this elsewhere on the show. It's happening all over the place. Honestly, probably a better idea. Like who else is really going to look at buying this company in today's environment? And now with all the um, negative connotations just that, that now circle the company and, and, and all of this. Not to mention, uh, employees are fleeing and, and leaving in droves. Culturally, this thing is in an absolute you know, tailspin. Things are just not going well. And they're being distracted by, well, you know, what are we actually doing? What's our future? Da, 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 da. I mean, I don't think Elon's in, it, in any necessarily rush to buy Twitter, right? Like, he wasn't doing these for, let's say, a strategic purpose. Like he has an existing business and they had all these synergies modeled out. And no, he was buying it for conceptual and idealistic reasons. And those reasons still stand, although, albeit kind of diluted, because he's realized that there's actually a lot less people on this thing than, than he had previously thought. Um, and, uh, and, and I think they're really primarily just looking at the MDAOs in the US, let alone, you know, look at that, look at the MDAOs globally. I mean, that's a whole other can of worms, right? So I think the deal still might happen. Frankly, I owned a bunch of Twitter stock, full disclosure. I've sold a bunch of that Twitter stock and just taken the loss. I bought into some of it earlier on, which I probably am break even, but then I bought even more. And, I've definitely lost money on this deal. Fine with that, taking the loss and kind of not leaving it tied up in Twitter. And who do I blame? Do I blame Elon or do I blame Twitter management? I 100% blame Twitter management. 100%. This is not okay. You don't accidentally misreport this much spam and fake activity. You're doing it to prop up your growth story. And by the way, that growth story isn't just active users. That gross, these bots, these uh, fake accounts, they consume ad money, right? So they are rinsing through uh, advertisers' money with fake accounts, right? Like where, where are the um, advertising agencies? You know, there are rating agencies for this purpose, and like Nielsen, I think Comscore is another one. Where's Nielsen saying, hey, we think Twitter has suspicious bot activity? No, crickets. Where are the advertisers, you know, getting pissed at Twitter? Twitter can absolutely figure this out. Twitter is, is biased to not figure this out because it helps Twitter. It helps them to show their 
uh, uh, daily active users higher than they actually are. Those daily active users, those bot accounts are, are technically watching ads and having engagement on Twitter, um, which then Twitter sells ads against that activity, right? Like they're being counted as an active user. That's the whole challenge. That's the whole issue. So they're being counted as an active, active user. And that's one of the things in the letter that, that uh, Elon's lawyers published is they said, hey, when you identify um, a, a bot account and you suspend them, you are still including suspended accounts in your daily active user reporting. So like literally you are including bot accounts who are suspended into your daily active user numbers, right? Like that's inappropriate. I bet if we could look in their books and see how much money they're spending on content moderation, AKA thought police versus detecting spam and fake bot accounts, AKA rinsing advertisers money and defrauding investors. Which one do you think they're investing in more? It's absolutely the former. Company is just completely mismanaged and upside down, which does create a big opportunity as a buyer, as Elon, to fix the madness. Uh, but at what price? And 44 billion is clearly too high. If you like this video, go check out our videos kind of earlier on about Twitter, where we talk about their plateauing user growth before COVID hit. Go check out those videos and hit subscribe so not miss out on any other updates what's going on with Twitter and Elon, because the saga will continue.